Buxton Broadcasting Buxton. Corporation Well on The Lenny Henry Show The <laughs> Lenny Henry Show Two, three, ah! I'm a thoroughbred jockey from the DJ stable The king author of the chill turntable Beaming you the music at the speed of rhyme I'm light years ahead of my time And hard fight from a satellite Aliens body rocking all day and night Somewhere between Mars and Mercury You see a new start or Christianity Yeah, can you put me through to the head of programs office, please? Thanks We still have a lot of converted to accept phone cards on tomorrow's world, not the Antiques Roadshow. Oi, and we're going penthouse hunting this afternoon. I'm afraid I haven't got much time today, Delbert. Oh yeah, Winston, why is that? Is there some strategic arms limitation talk that can't go ahead without you? No, that's tomorrow. Today. <laughs> yeah, this is Delbert Wilkins here. I have a breakfast appointment with your boss this morning. I'm just figuring out to let him know I'm on my way. Yeah. Oh, well, I'd like some freshly squeezed orange juice, some whole wheat toast, decaffeinated <laughs> tea, and a lightly boiled free-range egg. I'll ring him up again to let him know when to put it on. Thanks very much. Be lucky. I'm afraid it's going to be hard-boiled, Delbert. This is as far as I'll go. What are you giving me, Winston? A lift. And now I've got to go to work. Winston, this is work. Being Delbert Wilkins' posse is a 24-hour-a-day job. If you want something less demanding, why don't you go and work for the Greenwich Time Signal as a pip? <laughs> got nothing to do with Gladys Knight. It's to do with this three-hour radio show I'm going to be doing for Alex every day between two... Winston, are you putting your own career first? What's the matter with you? And five. Shut up, Winston. This is a matter of life or death. I mean, if I'm late, they might only give me a 50-year contract. Yeah, I know. That's why I dropped you here. It's only 80p. 80 pieces of silver. What? It's from the Bible, Winston. No, it's not. It's from a freak machine. I want it this morning. Get thee behind me, Winston. And pull that hat down. I can see your horns. <laughs> morning, Colin. Sorry I'm late, guy. I hope this doesn't affect my TV career. No props. Motor breakdown? Nah, it's my chauffeur who needs repairing, guy. Uh, Delbert? Yeah? If this is a strippogram, it's not my birthday, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is your titillation, guy. This is for my protection. That's not an underground system down there. That's a sewer on rails. I mean, you're wading through the empty lager cans and the full to bursting football fans. You sit down on half a burger. The geezer's still eating it. He's halfway through the jacket. He says, oh, this tastes nicer than usual. Got any barbecue sauce? You say, hey, man, that's my jacket. Where when was the last time you saw a burger with three button cuffs? <laughs> Still, I'm here now, eh? Crikey, man, look at these papers. Not one single mention of my debut appearance last night. They're lame. Maybe you were on too late for the first editions. So. Yeah, well, I think you should hand them over to your ecology department, have them recycled into a big tree, preferably one with an incontinent dog in the vicinity. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, though. Very funny. No, I've had a few thoughts. Yeah, me too. Now, I thought I should host seven Nightwatch programmes a week, although I could stretch to eight if you twisted my arm. Well, I think, actually, we should just stick to one. <laughs> All right, then. As long as it's not Friday night, because that's when you put out the Partridge family, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> you can catch acne from just watching <laughs> David Cassidy, you know what I mean? <laughs> I happen to think it's fab. <laughs> yeah, and groovy tunes, too. <laughs> so, uh, which night am I on? Uh, last night. You see, Delbert, a continuity announcer is meant to link the programmes, not stop them appearing on the air. But the intros are meant to last about 30 seconds, not 30 minutes. TV AM became TV PM. Yeah, well, there was this geezer standing behind the camera going like this. Well, I respond to a bit of encouragement, don't I? Which is why I started telling them things like how I get my hair cut at the London Planetarium by laser. Delbert, the punters don't tune in to watch you. What are you talking about, guy? Why else would they watch? They certainly don't tune in to watch 25-year-old puppet shows with strings like dreadlocks or Australian women trying to escape from prison even though the walls are only made out of cardboard. They want to watch Delbert Wilkins. Delbert, I'm sorry. You're fired. Now, has my egg gone on yet? 
Livingston Broadcasting Corporation. Here you go, Wesley. Pin these up on it, will you? Flat shares and lonely arts on one side, used cars and massages on the other. Cheers, Alex. Here. <laughs> yeah. I thought you said it was for jobs. I did. Alex, as head of programmes, may I remind you of the Brixton Broadcasting Corporation's franchise? <laughs> How does this serve the community? Diane, great body, lovely mover. <laughs> I call that sexist exploitation. Yeah, and I call it a second-hand Citroen. These are the massage ads. Mm. I've done my research, see, and the four most lucrative areas of advertising are property, misery, cars and sex. You just summed up my life, Alex. <laughs> You've got to be miserable about Delbert. You're a TV star now. Oh, did you like it then? Didn't see it, mate. Too busy getting all this ready. The BBC too. How about you then, Julie? Ah, oh, Mr Delbert, sorry. Alex thought I should have an executive desk, so I was out raving a skip. <laughs> <laughs> Every expense spared, eh, Alex, as usual. So what about you then, wub up, wub up, wub up, Wazim? <laughs> I suppose you were up west gigging, laying down some fantastic plastic down at the VIP lounge in the limelight. Actually, Delbert, I was at home in bed. I would have watched, but you didn't have the Partridge family on. <laughs> well, let me tell you, guy, I was dread. Sure you were, son. Just think, if you hadn't got that job in television, independent radio would have been deprived of a star. Thanks a million, Dee. Well, you know, Winston's success here is all down to you, Delbert. If you hadn't held him back and humiliated him, he would have been snapped up ages ago. Well then, why not award me some honorary position, Julie? You know, like chief coach or something. In fact, why don't I go in there right now and keep an eye on Winston? Make sure he doesn't do anything silly, you know, like present a programme. <laughs> don't you be silly, Mandel, but you're far too busy to help us out. And now, the moment Brixton's been waiting for. Your very own friendly neighbourhood radio station. This is the BBC. Julie, it's no trouble. Wazim, let me help you stick some cards up, man. It's all right, though, but I've almost finished. Spend a little time twixt lunch and tea. <laughs> and tea and so BBC. <laughs> yeah, that's right, ladies. That's me, Winston. Here to soothe you through the afternoon with music and chat. <laughs> I hope you're not going to do your usual trick and smash up the radio station. <laughs> it's through there. Let me show you the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I just, uh, I just dropped in to say if there's anything I can do to lend a hand with this worthwhile venture. Oh, all right, thanks. Like a spot of uh, community broadcasting, for example. Oh, well, PC Lily, you could start your community service by doing a spot of decorating, because they seem to have found a colour scheme to match the music. Crap! <laughs> Sod off, Del, but I chose it. Oh dear, Mr Wilkins, she doesn't sound like one of your fans. <laughs> I am, though. I caught your TV appearance last night. Congratulations. PC Lily, you mean to say you stayed up late to check me out on the box? How rare. Someone with taste. No, actually, I was standing guard at a break-in at an electrical shop. You were on the one TV set that hadn't been nicked. <laughs> Someone else with taste. So, while I was doing Night Watch, you were out pounding the beat as a Night Watch man. Eh, constable? Careful, Wilkins. I only need a couple more collars to get my sleeves full again. Uh, as much as I'd like to referee in the next fight, boys, I do have a radio station to run. Yeah, and I've got a programme meeting to attend in the back of a stretch limo. That is if I can find four empty parking metres in a row. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Julie, just because I'm a big super-duper doesn't mean to say that I'm too big to come back and help you out with the odd programme. That is, if ever you need me. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Sorry, Julie, did you say something? Go <laughs> ahead, uh, drop in sometime if you can spare us a minute. That's 24 hours, Sam. <laughs> yep, that's right. And let's see what yours truly has got lined up for you on this Brixton afternoon. <laughs> well, today there'll be recipe of the day coming up soon. And then I'll be giving you my early and late spots. That's early opening shops, late closing chemists. <laughs> and after that, it'll be time to find out when it's gonna be high tide on the River Thames. <laughs> That's right, it's gonna be one big party. <laughs> oh, and I nearly forgot. 
Stay tuned for today's lighting up times. <laughs> and that's not what you think it's going to be, you rastas. Hey, watch it, Winston. It's a bit risque, that. Sorry, Alex, I was only trying You'll have the IBA down on us like a ton of stuff fine leaves. <laughs> Taking away my licence before I've had a chance to print money. It was only a quip, Alex. That's what DJs are supposed to do. Quip. And it's Mr. Kazoblis when you're on duty. Yeah, but the public know me as Winston now. <laughs> All right, forget that. <laughs> well, look, there's still a problem with this playlist of yours. Look at this. The Isley Brothers. No, no, Alex. It's the Isley Brothers and they're safe. I mean, it's not one of their risque numbers, you know, like, uh, tonight is the night, brackets, if I had you. <laughs> now we're legit. Every time you play a record, I've got to pay for it, right? Needle time. And there's about ten of these Isley geezers, so my wallet's going to have more perforations than a tea bag. Six a solo artist in future. Or better still, don't play any records at all. Yeah, what's wrong with a few phone-ins? Conversation's not my strong point. Hey, look, <laughs> just use your imagination. Steal some of the stuff Delbert used to talk about. No, I couldn't do that to him. Why not? What's he ever done for you? Well, he's exploited me, insulted me, <laughs> never paid me, <laughs> and made it all seem like it was my fault. But I could never betray the loyal trust of a friend like Delbert Wilkins. Besides, he might be listening. <laughs> uh, yes, hi. I'm a regular viewer of the uh, Night Watch program. And I'm ringing up to find out what happened to that brilliant geezer. You know, the brilliant one who was hosting the show last night. Um, Delbert somebody? You what? Well, you can't waste talent like that guy. What's the matter with... Well, I for one will never watch television again. Ever. My name? Um, Murphy Richards. Uh, oh, you are Claudette. Oh, I must have been sleep talking. It's an old childhood habit. Some kids used to wet the bed. I'd call the states. I used to call President Kennedy, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> of course, he used to be called Cassius Clay then. In fact, I bet that's why he changed his name, because I kept ringing him. <laughs> Why have you started doing it again? Is it stress? Stress? What are you talking about, stress? What have I got to be stressed about? You tell me. You're the one wearing your clothes in bed. <laughs> ah. Well, this is probably because we weren't on the phone at home, so when I did my sleep talking, I just used to get dressed and use next doors. <laughs> See, even when I was a kid, I had the height, I had the weight. And now you've got the sack. Sack? What are you talking about, sack? I've never heard of the word. Haven't you? Yes. I knew there was something wrong when you arrived and took the plug off the TV set. I thought we were in for an evening of uninterrupted romance. But no, the only things that got nibbled were your fingernails. Claudette, I've been gonged off by a gink who wears glasses the size of Streatham Ice Rink. He's got a spiky top haircut and says things like fab. You mean he's young? The geezer was still wearing pampers, guy. <laughs> OK, then, let's be positive. Did this TV gink give you a golden handshake? More like a brass knuckle duster. Well, why don't you let me invest it for you? I can't do that. Oh, go on. You can trust me. I'm an accountant. And I've got my articles. Yeah, well, keep them away from me. They give me a headache. <laughs> I just can't do it. Oh, yes, you can. No way, God. <laughs> I've spent it. Oh, well, that's a great way to pay for a new flat. Spent it on what? Well, after the now vacancy sign went up at Alex's, I found myself wandering around Brixton High Street in a totally befuddled state. But then I felt this surge of pure energy come right up through the pavement and up my trouser legs. Hey! Yeah, that's right. I was outside Rumbelows and there was this dazzling array in the window, this vision. Two black Technics turntables, a pair of Spondicious Tannoy fold-back speakers, a Citronics mixing desk with crossfader, Bayer microphone, Bayer earphone. That's right, Claudette, you got it. I bought a pirate radio station that's gonna blow the living daylights out of the Nightwatch program. Let me hear you say ho. Come on, Claudette, you're not saying ho. Ho. Brixton Broadcasting Corporation. Yo, Julia, I'm just popping in for a rap with Winston, all right? Uh, Delbert, can't you read? I had to stick that up yesterday to stop him being mobbed. <laughs> Winston mobbed! I know, by health and safety inspectors, right? Winston was putting people at work to sleep like barbers. <laughs> they were waking up to find their lino covered with bits of flesh and severed ear rolls. Actually, he was mobbed by a groupie, so you better join the queue. Here, help yourself to a copper. 
Thanks a lot. <laughs> this is what I call the unacceptable face of capitalism. Yep, that's right, ladies. Here it comes. The BBC's recipe of the day. <laughs> and today, it's for chocolate cake. And it's been sent in by a listener from London, South East 23. So I suppose you could call it a Black Forest Hill Ghetto. <laughs> I'll wait till it's finished, Julie, all right. Hey, you haven't got a BBC sleeping bag in that stall, have you? Six. <laughs> Oh, blimey, Alex, hang on. Let me put my sunglasses on. Stop your jumper giving me a frontal lobotomy. Like you've given to this radio station. <laughs> What's your day? Make yourself at home. Did he pay for his coffee? Hey, Julie, got a great new programme for you. Isn't that what I'm supposed to say to you? A little something for your identity parade. BC <laughs> Lily, join the club. You've been framed. <laughs> uh, and what's he going to be? The tax disc jockey? Show him your card, constable. Sandwich tins. Cup shop? Yeah, giving listeners the chance to ring in and grass on their next door neighbour. <laughs> and spend the night in a cell with the psycho of their choice. Or whoever happens to be on duty at the time. <laughs> no, there aren't any prizes. Uh, solving crime is the responsibility of every citizen, sir, not just the police. <laughs> and we'll be getting a percentage of the reward money, which will make up for what we're losing on your job board, won't it? Show PC Lily to the studio, will you? I'm sorry, I'm too busy hanging him. <laughs> I'll find my own way, Mr. Kazoblis. Stir with tea. You mustn't think of me as a bogey man, as a, a symbol of repression. Try to think of me as a village idiot. <laughs> Bobby! <laughs> Not a bad little operation, is it, Delbert? Accessible to the whole community we are now, whether it's little old ladies or unemployed kids. Excuse me. And they come in here because they know we care. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> Dear? Are you the owner? Because the lifts in my block of flats don't work and I live on the top floor. Yeah, what you've got to do is this, love. Ring the council. The number's in the book and there's a phone box around the corner. Have you got any change? And there's a bank over the road. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, his advice is about as good as his coffee. But not as expensive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, Alex, I'll see this lady across the road and give her a piggyback up the stairs. Hey, don't leave without a souvenir, will you? I've got one. I remember this is the most disillusioning day in my life since I discovered Father Christmas was a white geezer. <laughs> Just when you thought it was safe to go back on the streets without getting nicked, now you can sit by your radio in the comfort of your own home and still get nicked. <laughs> 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 Only joking, listeners. Let's ask PC Lily to fill you in. I, I mean, give you the details. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. <clears throat> Afternoon, all. <laughs> if you've seen anything suspicious in the past few days, <laughs> I want you to tell me all about it. So why not give me a call on... Uh, Two seven four seven five double O. Why don't you let someone know their numbers up? Cop shop, cop shop. <laughs> we gotta get you at the cop shop. I better get a few records ready, you know, just in case people don't feel like collaborating. How do you feel about the Isley Brothers? I didn't know they'd been paroled. <laughs> That's me. Right. Your case will feature in my first programme, Delbert Wilkins' Ombuds Dude, the man who put the U back into community. That looks like one of them jobs the police shoes. Yeah, well, last time they stopped and searched me, they said they were going to throw the book at me, so I caught it. <laughs> <laughs> so when did your lift's first malfunction? Sunday. How come you didn't report it till Wednesday? It took me three days to get down the stairs. <laughs> it not have made any difference. Ever since the council started sending them off, they've been trying to get me out. So what do they do? Offer you a hang glider? Yeah, they ain't offered me another flat. They just want me to go. Don't worry, darling. Delbert Wilkins will not desert you in your hour of need. Well, two and a half hours of need. Just leave everything to me, all right? Does that mean you'll fix the lips as well? No, but I know a man who can. <laughs> 
Winston Honeyford, I presume. <laughs> yeah, I did see you on Nightwatch last night. That's off the agenda, Winston. I've slapped a D notice on it, as in Delbert does not want to discuss. Failure to observe this injunction may result in a serious nasal blockage. I'm talking a Volkswagen up my nostril, Winston. You're the one that keeps on going on about it. So what's this crucial bit of social work you've got for me to do then, Delbert? I'm a very busy man, you know. <laughs> Look at what you're doing, work, eh? Cakes, cops and chemists. I've heard better interference, Winston. It's hardly in the socket, is it, eh? Huh. Anyway, I sacked you. You're unemployed, remember? Maybe. But my seasonally adjusted trend is still upwards, old boy. Ha, ha, ha. I want you to fix these lifts. What about that little word? Now. No. That's not the one I meant. Please now. That's it. Psst. Winston, I always thought you were an empty vessel. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> oh, blimey, man. Look at this place. Must be like living in a tin of alphabetty spaghetti. That should be spelt with two L's. So did you catch my show this afternoon then, Delbert? Ooh, yes, I did catch it, Winston. It was highly contagious. Like rabies, without the laughs. You have me foaming at the ears. Cheers. Well, I was shocked to hear that you joined the Yardies. You what? But they're a violent gang of criminal thugs, aren't they? Yeah, that's right, the Scotland Yardies. <laughs> You're part of Lily's posse now, so I suppose you'll be hanging out with him down at his club, the Blue Truncheon, sipping on police cocktails like a slow, comfortable kosh against the head, a Harvey Selbanger. <laughs> Look, Del, but it wasn't my idea to get him on the show. Anyway, Lily's a different man now. He's been deprogrammed, like this control panel. The geezer's had his fuses taken. Oh, don't give me that, Winston. Underneath that, excuse me, madam, have a nice day, let me just escort you across the street exterior. He's still a Rottweiler with a pointy hat. <laughs> Mission completed. Mission one, Winston. I've just fixed both the lifts, Delbert. Yes, and I'm so impressed, I'm so very impressed, Winston, that I'm prepared to entrust you with the relaunch of the pirate ship Delbert Wilkins, also known as Crucial FM. Yeah, that's right, Dredd. I'm going back on the air. Where from? I mean, where from? My place, of course. Have you never heard of a studio flat? <laughs> Hold on a minute, Delbert. Your flat is only on the first floor. You're going to need an aerial about 200 feet high, man, to get out decent signals. Well, can't I just turn up the volume? Or attach it to that master at Crystal Palace? Nah, no, Alex has already tried that. Look, the only real solution is to live higher up. Why not get yourself that penthouse flat? <laughs> Winston, what do I do now? Please? Roll it on. But I want the walls ragged. How do I do that? Roll it on with a rag. Winston, I'm the world's best dressed man. I don't possess any rags. <laughs> Just leave it to me. I'll do it, all right? Thanks very much, Winston. You're a true and loyal friend. I'll stand here and lend moral support. Yeah. It's exciting, this, isn't it, Winston? It is. If you're hanging from a balcony 200 feet up with only an aerial to hold on to, very exciting. What are you talking about, Winston? I gave you a safety harness, didn't I? That reminds me, I must attach it to something. <laughs> Winston, how do you tie a reef knot, guy? <laughs> you mean... Just about sums you up, that does, Delbert. <laughs> Always thinking of yourself first. Right, that's it, I'm off for good. Winston, Winston, Winston. Rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> Man, what's the matter with you? I'm doing this for you as well as for me. I'm saving you from a fate worse than death. I mean, listen to this radio hat and see what your station is putting out. You want to keep this on? Protect your brain from it. You're always saying I haven't got one. Yeah. It's Alex's request show. Family favourites. Yeah, the Manson family. <laughs> you should be here at Crucial FM doing something relevant, like single parent family favourites. I'm only trying to stop you going totally bland, Winston. Look, Delbert, Alex pays me all right, and I get job satisfaction. My recipe spot makes a lot of people very, very happy. All right, all right. But all I'm saying is this. 
Wherever you go, whatever you do, there'll always be a place for you. Here. Oh. Cheers, Delbert. Well, actually, it'd be better down there and across a bit, because how am I supposed to do the weather if I can't see it? Shift it, Winston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, this is it. Time to crack open yet another leather-bound volume of the Delbert Wilkins Guide to Cruciality, the number one best-selling rival to Robert Maxwell's Guide to Humility. <laughs> <laughs> Now then, this week, how to improve your environment. Now you probably noticed that all the graffiti has gone. It was quite easy to get rid of actually. All I did was ring Mrs. Thatcher and tell her that a former member of the MI5 was writing his memoirs on my lobby wall. <laughs> <laughs> now then, I got a message from Mr. Zaz. He's the geezer who tries to get famous by spraying his name all over the place, in fact in more places than Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yo Zaz, you're famous already guy, because we can see the dirty grey hole in the ozone layer above your head. In fact, if you keep it up, the Earth's atmosphere is gonna look like a string vest. Totally unfashionable, you know what I mean? Look, guy, if you wanna write, try writing poetry or a novel or a song. But do me a favor, don't write it with an aerosol can on a wall because you need a JCB to turn the page. <laughs> Cruciality means realizing that we all share the same space and we gotta make the best of it, not the worst. There's just no room for selfishness, guy. <laughs> I always said I was upwardly mobile, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on! There must be somebody out there who's seen something suspicious sometime. About. What about driving licenses, Winston? What about them? Well, um, do you know anyone who hasn't signed theirs? I don't know anyone who's got one. <laughs> Maybe we should think about having a little crackdown. Move aside, Robocop. Why don't you crack down on the real villains? The unscrupulous landlords harassing and demoralizing council terrorists to get them out. These bag up in out of water as the lips they keep sabotaging. Yeah, this is just a trailer for Brixton's newest, wickedest radio station. Who's your crackdown? Sorry to butt in on your show, Winston, but I needed some prime time advertising. I don't know what a big audience your valiant cocktail pulls in. That's all right, Del. What are you doing basically... talking to him? He's jamming our signal. I slit his throat. Pradotti. That's his cotosso, Pradotti. Hold on, Alex. That's a bit risky. We're still on the air. Yeah, that's right. You're listening to... Crucial FM. The station paid for by credit with total access, plain plastic and keeping very flexible hours. I'm going to open my account with Odyssey and back to my roots. Oh man, this is sabotage. I better go and check the list. This could be like the end of King Kong. <laughs> Dear Mrs. Lewis. Cough! It's supposed to be energy for life. I only got 30 seconds. <laughs> you don't get rid of me as easily as that, Cecil Parkinson. This is still Delbert Wilkins broadcasting to you on Crucial FM. What's happening, Brixton? Any requests? Please, <laughs> don't have that. <laughs> Well, I'm the Lady Henry Show. I'm the Big Coach Queen.